Well, it's about time for another quarter notes. This is where I look at four albums that I've been really enjoying. I don't have quite enough to say about a full length album review, but I still want to get something out there, let you guys know what I've been listening to. And I mean, I have enough to say for a little bit, but not a whole lot for an album review. So. Uh, this time it's going to be EPs, and generally I don't review EPs on my channel, it's just, it's not really how I listen to music, I prefer a full length album. I feel like an EP is kind of like a nice little snack, but I'm much more interested in a full meal. But every once in a while a good EP will come my way and I still want to talk about it and I still want to kind of let you guys know about it. So I've got four EPs that I've been listening to lately and I want to kind of talk about them. So let's dive in. <music> Existence is Temporary by Grace Hayhurst. So, uh, this is the first debut, uh, first debut, uh, this is like the first uh, iteration of Grace's work and uh, she is a fantastic metal guitarist uh, and some of the work that she's been able to put out within these five songs is just stellar. If you want more of that experimental, jazzier, heavier style of progressive metal, then this is really for you. I'm loving the unique flair without relying too hard on influences of the past. You can still feel influences from pretty much everything from the progressive metal works. I'm loving that even though it's instrumental, you can still get the idea and the concept of this album all about what is the human existence, what is our relationship with death, how do you live a meaningful life when death is around the corner? And I'm really, really enjoying that. Like I, I, I struggle with that myself. So I, I see a lot of myself on this album in terms of the musical styles and that. Uh, and I really love this. Um, I love the buildups that this album goes through, a little bit of the ebb and flows. Uh, and I love the fact that Grace is able to kind of stretch her legs and allow to explore the space, even on this smaller, uh, expression of an EP. So this is one that I would definitely check out if you're a fan of a more guitar-led, more raw, progressive metal music. Uh, I think this is a great addition to the progressive metal landscape, and I'm really excited to hear what Grace has in store when she decides to release a full-length album. Uh, so yeah, this one is a definite download for me. Highly recommend uh, going and checking it out. It gets, it gets the note seal of approval in that sense. The Indigo Child by The Deer Hunter. So The Deer Hunter put out a new EP, and this kind of comes off the heels a little bit from their instrumental album of The Fox and the Hunt, which was just kind of reworkings and the more orchestrated um, symphony uh, from the music that was found on the Act 4 and 5 album of theirs. Uh, Deer Hunter uh, is known for their legacy of their Axe Suite, which encompasses Acts 1 through 5, who knows if we're going to get a six? Still kind of up in the air, because I know they want to do a movie. Uh, and this is also after the All Is As All Should Be EP that came out in 2017. So uh, this one here is, uh, I guess, kind of like a soundtrack of The Indigo Child. Now, I want to be straight up. I haven't actually heard or I haven't actually seen uh, The Indigo Child. I've just heard the music from it. So I kind of want to keep that in mind. I'm only reviewing the music that I'm hearing on this. And really, you just have the title track of The Indigo Child and The Indigo Child Reprise, and then the latter half of the album is all the kind of like soundscapes, soundtrack score from this particular work of The Indigo Child. Uh, and I'm loving the more experimental side on this. I know Casey Crescenzo, who is kind of like the, the guiding light for the deer hunter, uh, Casey's experimentation in terms of more synthesized sounds, uh, utilizing these computer overlays and dubs, uh, really perked my interest, especially when it came to his own vocalizations and his own singing. I was really loving some of the more quirky and strange aspects on the title track. But honestly, it's those first two tracks of The Indigo Child and The Indigo Child Reprise that I just love. It's very catchy. It's very memorable. It gets into my head and I can't help but like hear it all the time of The Indigo Child. It's what Casey does so well. And I love, love, love that. Uh, and added to that, we have the vocals of, uh, I'm going to try this, Tyvoli. I think it is, the woman singing on this, and her voice lends her itself very beautifully and very 
properly to KC's during this whole thing. Uh, I love the soundscapes on this. Uh, obviously, I wish that it was just a little bit longer. I wish that they might might have had like a 10 or even 15 minute track just to clear everything off, or if they even reworked some of the tracks in the um, the soundscapes and the score of this to be a like I said, a 10 minute track. Uh, I think that this could have been really, really special. But what we've got in the end is still something that I love to listen to. I loved hearing. It's one that I've been listening to a lot lately. And as I mentioned, it's infectious, right? It's It keeps me coming back for more, uh, even though it's just such a small bite-sized chunk. But that's kind of where I'm at for this one. Um, if it was a little bit longer in a full-length album, we would have had something extremely special, as I've already mentioned. But because it's just a short, quick one and done kind of a, an essence uh this is one that i would probably again download i'm uh, not quite sure if i would pick this one up in physical format like i did with uh all is as all should be um but i actually prefer this one more just because of how catchy it is although there's not as much variety so it's kind of where i'm at for that one Cool Memories by William Sanford. So, William Sanford, full disclosure, is actually a patron of mine. He uh, donated enough to kind of request a uh, review of one of his albums, and the um, album that he wanted to do was one of his own. And I always kind of hesitate and shy away from doing that, only because I feel like if I want to give a proper, honest review... I always feel hesitant to do so when somebody's paying me money for their own work. Um, but you know, I've talked with William and I've I've uh, live streamed one of his albums before. And I always like his work. It's very meditative. It's very uh, transient. Um, and this one kind of follows suit. It's all instrumentals in that sense. It is an EP at just over 25 minutes worth of music. Um, I, what I love about this one in particular is the use of uh, stereo on it, like especially within the rhythms. They're kind of floating around your head if you're listening to it on a good pair of headphones. And I really, really found myself just kind of getting drifted away and losing myself in it. Like I'm getting flavors of like Jean-Michel Jarre or Jarre, uh, Tangerine Dream, some more of those like electronical musics that we heard from like the 70s aspects of there. But there's still like a lot of space on this album to really like crunch your teeth into. If I were to give criticisms of this album, and I feel like I do, um, it would be like there's no real memorable passage on this. There's no real standout moment on it. Uh, I feel it just kind of moves from one passage to another passage, and it's all very pleasant music, and it's all very enjoyable times, but at no point do I ever feel completely invested in it. At no point does it really wow me or really break out of the mold in any kind of sense. Uh, this is the kind of music that I would turn on if I need something light, if I need something not necessarily all that challenging, but keeps my interest a little bit, then that's probably what I would I would put on. So yeah, Cool Memories does feel like a little bit of a soundscape of memories gone by. And I think what would really service uh, William's work maybe going forward is perhaps if he were to invest in a full-length album, which he has done in the past, having like a clear direction and a clear concept of where the music is going to go, I think that would service him really, really well. Uh, just to have that kind of touchstone as he goes through the music. So this one's still a really good time. I would honestly suggest streaming it. Uh, I'll leave the link down below to go and check it out on his page. Um, it was one that I enjoyed and you know, I would suggest giving it a try. It might be up your alley. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I've got for Cool Memories. The Stranger in the High Tide by Moron Police. So Moron Police put out one of my favorite albums way back in 2019. I think it was 2019. Wow, has it been that long already? Like, on the one hand, it feels very long, but on the other hand, it feels like yesterday. Um, of A Boat on the Sea blew me away. It was one of my favorite albums of that year. The uniqueness of the music, the engaging aspects of it, the energy that it brought, it was so unique, and I hadn't heard anything like that before. And I just love that album. So I've been on the lookout for anything new in Moron Police's discography. And now we get The Stranger in the High Tide, which is about 25 minutes worth of music across four tracks. And they kind of 
marketed this as being a side quest. You know, this isn't necessarily the new direction that they're going to go on. This isn't necessarily where they're going to go for their next album, but it is something that they wanted to give a try on. And it does feel like a continuation of the music that they found on A Boat on the Sea. It's in that same vein. It's very engaging. They're trying a little bit more on this. I feel like there's a lot more experimentation and pretty much all of the experiments that they've laid down on this album works beautifully. They're trying more uh, engaging aspects of it. I think that they're trying different styles. Like that was one thing that I loved about A Boat on the Sea was that they didn't allow themselves to be defined by any one genre on there. They were always trying something different. And this one kind of continues that and each track nails it out of the park. And I love all the different flavors of this album. I'm loving all the different mosaics on it. I love that they still include a lot of that clarinet and the saxophone on here. Uh, so they're trying those uh, tested and true Exp expressions on here uh, and the whole thing overall is still very engaging. Uh, this is one absolutely that I love with my whole heart as I do with most of Moron Police's work and I'm so very excited for their next full-length studio album. Uh, again this one gets the note seal of approval. I really really enjoyed myself with this one. Highly recommend it. Go out and check it out once it becomes available for listening. And that brings us to the last one. So those are my four. We've got Moron Police, Deer Hunter, William Sanford, and Grace Hayhurst. What did you guys think? Have you heard these albums? If you haven't, please go out and check them out. I think they're all very unique in their own way. Uh, and there's always something to be offered on each of those. Uh, and if you have heard them, what did you think about them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Let me know by commenting down below. And if you like what you see and you want to help support me and you want to be cool like William Sanford was by donating to my Patreon, you too can donate to my Patreon. I've left the link down below. Even a dollar a month goes a long way. Get your name at the end credits. And if you donate enough like William did, you get your own album shout outs or your own album listens. Um, I'll usually work with you because I don't, as I mentioned, I as a rule, don't review your own work, um, but uh, we can always negotiate that kind of stuff. So that's what I've got. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.